Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I wanted to talk about the Sanctum League mechanic and give some first impressions on it. This is something that is impossible to fully separate from the broader state of the game. I think a lot of the changes in 320 will make the game better for people who are unhappy with it in 319. The nerfs to rare monsters are significant. Rare monsters are often still very, very tanky, but the ones that are tanky aren't particularly dangerous. The ones that are dangerous aren't particularly tanky except for sometimes when you get one of the Pantheon themed ones, and those ones are genuine mini bosses. Broadly speaking, I think that people's main complaints about 319 have mostly been addressed. The new Atlas has a lot of additional customization options and also lets you spec really hard into a specific Atlas mechanic and reap some pretty significant rewards from it. So that's the core state of the game, but then there's the League mechanic. The League mechanic is going to be one of the most polarizing in a long time. From talking to people, the, there seem to be two main attitudes that people have got. There's one section of the player base that are like, this is slightly disappointing. And this seems to be a pretty large section. Then there is a smaller section who have been like, I have been having so much fun playing with this league mechanic that I just can't bring myself to do all the normal game things I would be doing on day three of a new league. Those people have been running the Sanctum time and time again while they've been leveling. They've gotten into maps. They've stayed in low tier maps longer so that they can progress more with their Sanctum experience. They've gotten a powerful set of relics organized. They're making really deep runs that are full clearing the entire Sanctum. I've got some video footage showing in the background of some of the runs that I've been doing, but I think one of the key things with the League mechanic is that it is extremely tactical while still being moment to moment exciting. This is something that GGG have tried to get right a couple of times in the past and I don't think they've ever really quite nailed it the way they have with the Sanctum. However, the problem with the Sanctum is the massive build imbalance here. At the moment, the best way if you want to play a melee build in the Sanctum is to make a separate character for the Sanctum, run all your Sanctums on this second character, and then get whatever relic your melee character wants that way. It is that bad. Now there is content that some builds excel at and some builds fail at, and that's sort of been a long-term thing in Path of Exile. However, the Sanctum mechanic scales this up to the nth degree. It is absolutely essential to have the capacity to project damage around corners in the Sanctum, and a lot of builds just can't do this. This is something you'll see me do in the background a lot, where I'll be firing my Caustic Arrow and then just hiding behind a wall for a while while the monsters die, or doing things along those sorts of lines. You have to constantly be moving. I really think that there needs to be some sort of setup where if you've dealt melee damage to a monster recently, you should not be taking resolve damage from any of the non-telegraphed hits in the dungeon. That's the thing that's really killing it at the moment. Additionally, if you can deal damage by proxy without taking actions, this is extremely powerful in here as well. Spell totems are really good. Traps are a little bit worse than spell totems mechanically, but still very good. Mines are a little bit better than traps mechanically, although they're broadly speaking a weaker archetype than traps at the moment. So there's all of these different little options. But broadly speaking, it's all about dealing damage through proxy. The damage that is striking the monster is not originating from your character, and your character does not have line of sight to the monster at the time the damage is done. That is the key thing about builds that are really strong in the Sanctum. That and or the ability to freeze very powerful monsters very quickly. Those are the two ways that people are succeeding at the Sanctum, and I think that there needs to be some serious look at this build imbalance that's happening. Otherwise, we're going to see a reversal of the trend where we've been having more and more build diversity in recent leagues. Anyways, another little thing that's really important for people to know, there is a not very well explained in game mandatory quest for your progression through the Sanctum. And this is to go to Act 2 Felshrine Ruins, and then again to Act 7 Felshrine Ruins. You can do this while you're progressing through the storyline, or you can do it afterwards. You must go to both of these and enter the Forbidden Sanctum in both of them in that order. This is essential, this is what unlocks your relic slot, and you will not proceed very far through the Sanctum without relics. The core feeling of Sanctum runs is that your first failures buy you the strength you need to succeed in your later successful runs. And this strength comes in two forms. Part of it is your relic pool, and secondly, it is your player skill. It is your ability to know what the dangers are so that you can already be dodging when the monster's big telegraph slam comes your way. You will fail things the first times you try them, then you'll get better at them. As well as that, you'll pick up sources of resolve, inspiration, and the like. These will help you power through the things that were beating you in the past. Anyways, I thought I would leave it there. This is only a quick first impression slot, and I will see you around. May your Valobs have interesting results.